Welcome back everyone, Dustin here, Average Guy Hi-Fi. So this was a video I was super excited um, to shoot. This subwoofer here uh, is about 20, um, 20 years old now. I think they came out right around the year 2000. Um, this is a Velodyne HGS-12. So the ad popped up on Craigslist uh, for $275. Um, I jumped on it. Um, it was uh, actually advertised as an HGS 10, but when I got there, it was a very dark theater room. It was a beautiful room, by the way. I was drooling when I was there. So hello, if you're watching this video, you said you would, so you know you are. Um, but when I got there, it turned out it was an HGS 12. So it was like a pleasant surprise, basically. So I told him, I didn't want to, you know, f rip him off or anything like that and just walk away. I said, Hey, this is actually the 12 inch version, not the 10 inch version, but he was still cool with the $275. Uh, loaded this guy up. He replaced it with dual 18. So uh, again, if you can kind of, he had his audio rack all pulled out, Macintosh gear was going in it, all of those type of things that I, one day I pray that I can um, get a room and I can dump some money into it like that. But anyway, super nice guy, very good transaction, but I've been enjoying this thing ever since. This has just been a, it's like when you meet, meet your heroes. They say never meet your heroes because you'll be disappointed. But um, when I used to drool over this back in the day when I was working at a fish and chips joint or selling golf clubs at a golf store, there's no way I could afford a $2,000 subwoofer. So I would go into the Magnolia Hi-Fi. This is when they were standalone here in Bellevue, and they would always have um, Velodynes, the big Velodynes hooked up to their big uh, electrostatic Martin Logan speakers, and that was like, I still remember those, viv uh, those memories very vividly. So that's obviously what got me going down this crazy hobby that I've been involved in. So, um, But when I got this thing home and I... I turned it on, tested it out. I am just blown away by how deep and quality the bass is for this thing. I've owned some pretty awesome subwoofers, like I've mentioned. The thing that reminds me most of this subwoofer out of all the subwoofers that I would, I've owned would be the um, SVS SB13 Ultra. Uh, I would say that this thing just probably pretty similar. This is no slouch. A lot of people look past um, uh, Velodyne, but you definitely shouldn't. They've been making high quality subwoofers uh, before um, those other brands ever even started. So the plate amplifier on this subwoofer is 1250 watts RMS. It's a 3000 watt peak uh, plate amplifier, just to give you an idea. Um, this is also a servo series subwoofer. So if you aren't familiar, I'll put a link in the description from uh, Paul over at PS Audio. If you are familiar with him, be sure to check his his, uh, he's actually the owner of PS Audio and makes it an amazing gear. Um, one day I hope to meet Paul, so I, I'll put a, his video in there that describes exactly what servo um, technology does to subwoofers, but basically it reduces the overhang. It keeps the um, subwoofer movement in check a little bit more. So um, it's got actions in place to make sure that the um, subwoofer is behaving the way it should. Uh, that's the easiest way I could describe it. If you want to get technical, watch Paul's video. He'll walk you through it a little bit more. Um, but yeah, it's just a super high quality 12 inch uh, servo controlled subwoofer backed by a massive amplifier um, and it just met and exceeded my expectations. So we'll pop over there. I'll show you this thing in action. It's not going to have as much uh, crazy excursion as some of the subwoofers I've had, but my house really can't take it. This thing, I've had to turn it way down on the, um, tune it in, turn it way down. It just vibrates everything. I'm on an elevated floor in a duplex right now, so it's like... This is a no-no. I mean, my neighbors are pretty cool, but I uh, they would learn to hate me very quickly if I kept this thing in my system. So somebody actually already has a have a buyer for this thing, so it's already sold, and then we're on to the next. So we'll pop over there. Um, just to keep things similar, I used Mad Max Fury Road when I did the Velodyne uh, Mini-V. I'll put the, um, the little video at the end of this video so you can just click on that if you want to see it. Um, and we'll show Mad Max Fury Road 4K on my uh, LG OLED TV with my Denon X3300 AVR and my Marantz um, M7055 uh, amplifier. I'm also just picked up some Mar uh, Monitor Audio Bronze speakers 5.1 that I'm going to be testing. So I'll be using those speakers for this demo. So we'll just go over there and show you guys this thing in action. Okay, everyone, before we show you the uh, the demo here and the sound and the uh, excursion of the subwoofer, I just wanted to point out that this subwoofer does make a very slight uh, but noticeable hum uh, when you get it all plugged in and everything. So in my room, you don't notice it. I've got so much going on uh, with a heat pump and an air, uh, air purifier, things like that, that you definitely don't notice it. But if you have a super quiet room, you might. So I just wanted to point that out. So uh, here we go. I've got the um, Velodyne HGS uh, set to about halfway on the back panel of the subwoofer amp and then um, got it all tuned using Odyssey and we're going to be listening to it at negative 10 dB. So here we go. Here comes the fun part.
All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that demo. Uh, again, that movie is just a fantastic movie for testing your system. So I like that one. I like Ready Player One. Um, I like the original Tron. I'm just praying they come out with uh, Tron in 4K here in the near future. Um, but definitely have that movie in your, uh, in your uh, collection if you're used to showing off to some friends or testing a system, because that definitely will do that for you. So um, before we jump into the Average Guy Hi-Fi review, this is actually a set of speakers that I also picked up here. This is a set of uh, Klipsch R51Ms. So got a really good deal on these, and this will be coming up here in the near future. I figured it'd be a good... Um, set of speakers too that a lot of people own out there and we'll kind of figure out how they stack up against my Klipsch uh, RP600Ms, those monitor audio silver speakers and a few others that I've got lined up for you guys. So stay tuned for those videos. Um, let's jump right into it. So those of you that watch the channel know this already but I feel like I need to describe this for the people that are just popping in doing some research on this particular sub but there's five categories that I measure off of for the average guy hi-fi score. Each category is worth 10 points, 10 being the best, one being the worst, um, and then I give you guys the average, which is the average guy hi-fi um, score at the end. So the five categories that we go off uh, are going to be the quality, how the cabinet was constructed, the, the woofer itself, the knobs on the, on the plate amp, those type of things. Uh, number two is going to be the bass response, most important to many people that watch uh, these type of videos. Um, how that subwoofer performs in my room. So all rooms are different, but I'll just give you guys how it does in my room. Um, the next one is going to be the MSRP value. Uh, how the subwoofer stacked up uh, when it was at its MSRP pricing. Uh, the next category is going to be aesthetics. How does the subwoofer look in my room? Is it big and taking over the things, or is it kind of fit in a small place and has good performance? Um, the last of the categories is going to be my price paid. Uh, what I ended up picking the subwoofer up for, and then my score there. So. Again, we'll just jump right into it. Uh, when it comes to the quality, I gave it a nine out of 10. Uh, this subwoofer just has very high quality um, woofer, the box, the cabinet. Um, I found some people that opened one up. It looked like it had great bracing. The plate, the amplifier is just a monster, you know, 1250 RMS to 3000 peak. It's just a beastly amplifier. So nine out of 10 when it comes to quality. Uh, the bass response, I also gave it a 9 out of 10, which is hard to do with my scoring system. Um, that subwoofer puts out a ton of deep, articulate bass. My room was pressurized easy. Um, I had to find the areas where everything was vibrating. It just really is a, a I would like to say it's like a monster uh, of a little subwoofer. It just feels like it's wanting to get out. So it needs to go in a bigger room. So that's why I'm selling that thing, and I'll just be moving on to the next one. Um, so it came out. It came at nine out of ten when it came to the bass response. MSRP, uh, I gave it an eight out of ten. Um, it's a two thousand dollar subwoofer. If you would have walked into that Magnolia Hi-Fi store in Bellevue and bought it just at MSRP pricing, it would have cost you two thousand dollars plus tax. Um, this, when this subwoofer came out in nineteen ninety nine, um, this was kind of when the um, factory direct brands were getting a hold in the marketplace. So. Um, the reason the score is not a little bit higher is because there was those factory direct options out there at that time that could have compete or even beat the subwoofer at that price. Still a very good score though. Uh, gave it an eight out of 10 when it comes to the MSRP value. Uh, when it comes to the aesthetics, I gave it an eight and a half out of 10. It looks fantastic. It's got the gloss. I know some of you don't like gloss. I love gloss speakers as long as they're in good shape. That's the problem. They show swirls and all that stuff and this subwoofer is no exception there. Um, but I think it looked fantastic in my room. Eight and a half out of 10, small, compact, um, super performance, uh, very good, uh, well-rounded subwoofer if you ask me. Very well engineered. When it comes to my price paid, $275 for that subwoofer is an amazing deal, uh, but I gave it an 8.5 out of 10. The reason I didn't rate it higher is because it is a 21-year-old subwoofer uh, from the manufacturer's date on the back plate amplifier. So if you guys know anything about subwoofers, you'll read the forums and be like, hey, my so-and-so subwoofer died after five years. And, you know, those amplifiers, I think just due to their nature of high, high um, output, low output, high output, and the heat and everything that's generated, I think that subwoofer um, subwoofers are more pro prone to failure definitely than speakers that don't have any internal amplifiers or anything. Because those things seem to last forever as long as you, uh, um, you know, have the surrounds that don't rot away and the crossovers that don't deteriorate. But um, I gave it an eight and a half out of 10 when it came uh, uh, when it came to the um, the price paid. It's a, a very good score there too, but I have got some pretty killer deals. $275, just an amazing, amazing uh, a deal on that subwoofer. But what's that all average out to? It averages out to uh, 43 out of 50, which is 86%. Uh, one of the highest uh, scoring subwoofers that I've reviewed, super impressed by it. The new owner, like I said, has already um, said that he wants it. He's super excited for me to make this review so that he can come pick it up. So 
Um, but just keep in mind, uh, the age of subwoofers does matter. So if you can have the opportunity, I know during coronavirus times, it's not too many people are letting people inside the house, um, but it's a really good idea to test them out, at least get their word saying, hey, if I get this thing home and it doesn't work, um, can I get my money back? And then kind of rely on uh, faith and humanity there for that part of it. But I've never been hosed. Any, anytime I've ever had an issue, people have taken care of it. So I hope you guys are all staying healthy out there. Um, wanted to get this video posted so that new owner can uh, take possessions of the subwoofer. Then I'm on to the next review. So stay tuned if uh, used home audio or just general home audio that's within uh, affordability for a lot of you people out there. Uh, if that's the type of stuff that you're into, I should be able to give you guys some pretty good advice along the way here. So again, my name is Dustin. The name of the channel is Average Guy Hi-Fi. Thank you very much.